in the 1950s. I don't think it's possible for women who grew up in the 21st century to really understand what it's like to be trapped inside the home. Women developed things like housewife psychosis, where they were so isolated in the home, they started hallucinating and hearing voices. Women were on staggering amounts of psychotropic drugs. It wasn't uncommon for women to be locked up in psychiatric institutions for becoming psychotic like this. Many were lobotomized. Domestic violence was very normal. It was the number one reason women attended emergency rooms. And where are these men who are interested in traditionalism? Men today seem interested in hookup culture and pornography. I don't see any men lining up to pay for your whole existence. They complain about having to pay for a date before they fuck you. Hey guys, welcome back to Thema Sintoth. Grab your coffee, water, tea, whatever you're drinking, go and get that. Today we're going to be talking about the Chad Wife. Mm. Is it Chad Whiffery? Chad Tra- Chad Whiffery. Alright. Now let, let let's be clear. Being a housewife is nothing new. I think a lot of human history, a lot of uh, human hi- literature uh, is based on this idea about womanhood being uh, synonymous with sort of housework and being at home and submitting. We'll we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but a trad wife, a trad wife is something new. This is not your run of the mill, if you can call that housewife. Absolutely not. This is the invocation of Marilyn Monroe, cover girl, a full face of makeup, social media star, uh, that tells you that you, yes, 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 you women, you need to stay at home. You need to take care of the children. You need to have children to take care of said children. And, and most importantly, you need to submit to your husband. Pause. Uh, maybe that is not the most important thing. The most important thing is you need to tell the world that you're submitting to your husband. Did I mention you need a husband? Like, obviously, you need a husband to be a housewife. Yep. You need to have a husband to submit to. Now, you might be saying, Themis, you handsome dandy, you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. This sounds like the perfect life. Feminism came in and took women off of a permanent vacation. Rest in peace to my grandmother, whom I love. This was her take. Let me go get a husband now so I can become a trad wife. If that is what you're thinking, then I understand. However, we need to talk. I will become that woman that builds the home as I follow you. On earth, I declare and decree. I shall be a submissive wife unto you. This is about our duty, reflecting to the world what true marriage, what God really intends for marriage to be. How much do you... Now, no, 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 no. I know that sounds beautiful and amazing on your knees, telling him you're going to submit. It's fine. Before you turn off your computers, pack your office into that cute little box, burn every bridge on your way out with your middle finger in the air, oversized Prada glass on waving down a taxi cab in New York. Wait. <laughs> Sorry, that was a scene from Sex in the City. <laughs> but let's do that again. Before you look your boss in the eye that is right next to you in this car, black car, before you say, I am not about to kill everything feminine in me to become the ice queen that you are, Miranda. Before you muster that courage up to say, I am not like you, Miranda, runs out of the car and throw your phone into the fountain, the scene closes and we're, oh. Look, before you quit your job, let's start. The devil wears part is playing in my mind. I'm I'm sorry. Before you quit your job and run into the arms of the loving, good, kind husband that is going to provide you a castle to live in where you will never have to work, 
let's talk for a bit. And then at the end, make your decision because that's feminism, right? The right to choose. Now, I'm not qualified to tell you what to do, who to be, any of that. I don't give advice, but let's talk and see how we come out. Can we do that? All my life, I saw women leading, women working, and taking care of not only themselves, but everyone around them. It never occurred to me at all that there was a movement that inspired women to, quote, go to work. As a child, I assumed this was how things normally operate, have always operated, and would continue to operate in this way. I thought this was just how it was supposed to be. So imagine my surprise when the conversation about feminism destroying the modern world took hold on social media. What was the world before feminism? Did women Actually, this is what I thought I had prior to my awakening. Did women really fight to actively participate in capitalism? Is this why they were always tired women and now upset that to me seemed a bit odd, right? Young Themis was a bit naive. I was unaware of the reality that even the ideal of the nuclear family was part of capitalism. Women never opted out or in to capitalism. Being in the home was just as much a part of capitalism as working in the labor market. I put labor market in quotations for very specific reasons. If you know what they are, please type them down below. It wasn't the soft life depicted in conversations online. It being stay-at-home wives. No. In truth, women had no choice socially, politically, or even economically. But I'm getting ahead of myself. My bias is that I think women are capable of leadership in work and at home. Women, like men, have tremendous capacity, and we are just starting to see how women add value, tremendous value, to the outside world. And by the outside world, I mean that in a very direct sense, outside of the home. Okay, my bias is done out of the way. It is very simple. I see women as equal to men in their ability to add value outside of the home. I see men and women as equal in their capacity to add value within the home. I also think there are differences between men and women that might show up in certain areas that could cause disruption a lot of the times, it doesn't. Oh, now that that's out of the way, let's get back to what a trad wife is, because um, I'm fascinated by this trend online. I'm fascinated by women at the forefront of telling other women to go back in the home. Let's talk about it. So, what is a trad wife? CNN, in one of the articles, described the trad wife as a fringe subculture. So while that explains the size, it doesn't explain what a trad wife is. To understand that, I think we should go to the source. One of the leaders of the trad wife movement had the following to say. If you are not familiar with the term trad wife, it is a woman who chooses to live a more traditional life with ultra traditional gender roles. So the man goes outside the house, works, provides for the family. The woman stays home and she's the homemaker. She takes care of the home and the children if there are any. She explains, as you saw, that a trad wife is a woman who chooses a more traditional life with ultra traditional gender roles. That is, the man goes out and work, the woman stays home and provide. 
In an interview with Today, she also explains that she puts her husband wants ahead of her, and that has done nothing but benefit her and her marriage. It is important to note, I think, that she is 25 years old. Um, her name is S.T. Williams, and she was in university studying before she met her husband, or when her and her husband decided that they were perfect match. Uh, soon after, she dropped out of university, uh, and they got married, and this was the new era of her life. If the Chad wives are just these sweet, innocent people who just want to live a more traditional life, why are feminists upset? I did some digging, and what I came up with was a, a bit strange. So let's get into the feminist critique. The Guardian, we can start there because it was a softer set of critique, in my opinion. Hadley Freeman, in her article, wrote that a trad wife is a woman who doesn't work. <laughs> the shade. So as to look after their children, their husband, their home, and then talk nonstop about how great this is on social media. Who knew being so traditional was also so modern and so busy? Did, did everyone catch the shade? Does not work. Yikes. I guess cleaning the house and raising the children and taking care of the husband isn't work enough for Miss Freeman, who went on to explain that this woman and these women, more broadly, seem like they are looking for a father more than a husband. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to surround yeah. yourself with people that want to work. Not to be talked down to. The trad wife struck back and they let these feminists know that they were not looking for a father they were indeed looking for a husband with this rule for example from sd williams explaining how the relationship is structured so the first one is i don't leave the house after dark by myself um this is not a control thing this is a safety thing I've had a couple encounters and I don't wish to have any more. Along with leaving the house, I always notify my husband when I'm going to go somewhere and when I arrive. It's safety. Why not, right? And we always share locations with each other. I really recommend the Life360 app. It notifies you when your partner arrives or leaves and it notifies you if their battery is low. I love it. Number two. We don't do opposite sex friendships. Um, I don't think a woman needs to have a male best friend. Why? Why? Any companionship or company that I need, I can get from another woman. Number three, and this one's gonna ruffle some feathers. I submit and I serve my husband. This is a biblical thing, so don't twist this into something that it's not. It is a blessing to be my husband's helpmate and the Bible has the man of the household, not the woman. So he leads. Number four, we don't involve any outsiders or family members into our disputes. This is important because arguments, disagreements, whatever, need to stay within the marriage. And when you involve other people, it causes more issues and most likely people choose sides and you just don't want that. Number five, I take my husband's preferences into consideration. So with my hair, my clothes, I like to wear the things that he likes. And typically he's not gonna like something that is so outside of my norm. He's gonna like the things that he sees me happiest in. And that's usually pink and bright colors. And he loves my hair more naturally curly. So that's what I do most of the time. A lot of the comments in my other video, people were asking, what does he do for me? And I just want to correct you guys on something. A lot of Western women don't sit here and think, what can I do to make my man happy? No, they think, what is he gonna do to make me happy? You guys don't understand the benefits that you reap when you think about your partner before yourself. 
Let me know what you guys think. In the conversation about trad wife that is happening online, in the conception of archetypes, the liberated feminist is generally juxtaposed against the trad wife, right? And we can go through some descriptors of what the quote-unquote liberated feminist is in these people's minds. And by these people, I'm literally talking about conservatives here, like the conservatives who are purporting that the trad wife is the better option juxtapose the liberated feminist against the women claiming to be traditional wife. We will get into whether or not this is a good comparison some other time. I'm just putting it out there. So on one hand, we have the liberated feminist. This is the image that generally comes to mind, blued here. But let's go through the descriptors, will we? With a ton of makeup because of her low self-esteem, smoke marijuana, probably again because of her low self-esteem, sleeps around to improve again her self-esteem, got a crappy flower tattoo She, when she was 15, probably because of peer pressure and again because of low self-esteem, chubby from diet, they eat microwavable food and probably do so because of their low self-esteem, has disdain for men and patriarchy again, probably envious of men because of self-esteem, thinks God is gender fluid, don't know how to tie self-esteem into that so I'm just going to say self-esteem, uh, raised Catholic but hates the church, Again, don't know how to put self-esteem there, but we'll continue. Has no moral code to live by, only endless nihilistic relativism. Uh, I'm going to say again because of low self-esteem. Damage here from overdying it because of low self-esteem. Fake tan because of low self-esteem. Believe guns should be illegal because of homicide rate, but thinks abortion should be legal. Don't know how to tie self-esteem there, but... Imagine it floating in the back. Wears clothing that barely fits her because of low self-esteem. Claims she's bisexual but has only dated men because she wanted to fit in with the group, again because of low self-esteem. Works minimum wage job because gender studies doesn't get you anywhere. Chose it because she didn't think she could do STEM, so low self-esteem. Aborted her own child low self-esteem and has three cats, low self-esteem, looks down on priors. Self-esteem. <laughs> All right, so then we get to the Chad wife who loves Christ, family, husband in that order, feminine and modest because she has high self-esteem, loves her God-given natural beauty and wears light makeup because she has high self-esteem, loves and follows husband as the church follows Christ, high self-esteem. Husband loves her as Christ loves the church. Not quite sure why the love from the husband is included in the descriptor of the trad wife because she has no control over that unless she does because of her high self-esteem. Beautiful figure from healthy homemade meals and following church fasts. So high self-esteem because she goes on fast promoted by the church. In twenties, but already married with beautiful children, high self-esteem, bag the baller, period. Long, beautiful, natural hair, because long hair means high self-esteem, short hair means don't care. I don't know where I got that from, but I am a rapper now. Homeschools children, so they aren't taught progressive liberal BS, so conservative because of high self-esteem. Praise without ceasing. I I guess in continual prior, high self-esteem. Husband works hard to support the family. All right, period. Has taught her children to memorize the Our Father Creed, period. I do actually know this, let's test. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily breath and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Period. You're not ashamed of yourself. Are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassing. 
bilingual, period, period, bilingual and knowledgeable of family tradition and, oh, I, I guess bilingual is necessary here, period. So again, the, the the liberated feminist is juxtaposed against the trad wife in the conception, and this is the archetype that people want you to imagine when you think about the trad wife versus the liberated feminist, which I'm going to just suppose is every other woman in these people's mind. Not the trad wife, but the defenders of the trad wife. So we have an archetype to go with, or at least two at this point. Let's get into it. Yep. Yeah. Look, if you thought that was bad, <laughs> don't you go crying for the feminists because they came back swinging. They are fighting because this is for the soul of humanity. <laughs> I play too much. This is for the soul of humanity. Mm. The Daily Mail came out, and I kid you not, the title of this article about the Chad wife says, Darling, I'll do anything to make you happy. How the Chad wives sacrifice their own careers to satisfy their husbands every whim and insist it's the secret to marital bliss. Now, l just from the title alone, what do you think this article is going to do? Is it going to support or drag the Chad wife? <laughs> Talk about scathing. <laughs> Look, Nova Video even released a video that was supposed to be debunking the trad wife movement. By the way, this might be one of my favorite videos on the topic, uh, besides what I'm the masterpiece <laughs> that I'm now creating. Uh, this is what Nova um, had to say about the trad wife that it has lent a feminine veneer to conservative far-right and white nationalist ideologies. One thing that comes up again and again is this idea of women submitting to their husbands as a form of submission to God. Wives, respect your husbands. It's biblical. It's in the Bible. You treat your husband as the head of the household and obey him. It's a sacrifice, but it is a sacrifice well worth it. And this is meant to be a reciprocal relationship. You, as a woman, don't have to feel degraded by submitting to your husband because the premise is that his religious beliefs stop him from behaving badly. You want your wife to follow you? Be a man and follow Jesus and give her a reason to. Hmm, if only we had any history of religious men wielding their power to abuse those more vulnerable than them. Like with the example of finances, the idea of submission is that by giving up her independence, autonomy and power, a woman will be taken care of by a good and godly man. She serves him, he serves Christ, but only one person is scrubbing out the toilet. But the influence of fundamentalist religion extends far beyond whatever private arrangements a couple may have as part of a household. The battle feels gridlocked. <laughs> it doesn't feel gridlocked. The battle is gridlocked, right? It, it is gridlock. I'm going to give it that. And the, the reason it's gridlocked is because the stay-at-home girlfriend is absolutely not a part of this conversation. Um, let me just do this. Let's do a, a small segment right now for the stay-at-home girlfriend. Stay-at-home girlfriend, honorable mention, here you are. That's what my mornings look like as a 25-year-old stay-at-home girlfriend. I fill up Luke and I's water bottles to make sure we're hydrated. And then I made myself a bloom green juice. And then I made Luke his latte. I make him an iced latte with cinnamon and maple syrup and homemade almond milk. Then I tidied up our bedroom, made the bed. Then I did my very long skincare routine. It's like 20 minutes long and ice rolled. Then I did my five minute journal and went on a walk on the beach to get a coffee with Luke. And then I put my workout clothes on, did a workout at the gym with Luke. And afterwards made us some smoothie bowls with some superfoods. Then I made myself my second caffeine drink for the day, matcha latte with blooms collagen and then i planned out the rest of my day in my new planner saw a butterfly and then we stopped at this cute wine store got a bouquet of flowers 
then went to my dad's to celebrate his birthday. Day of my life as a stay-at-home girlfriend. I first did my skincare routine, then I did some ice rolling and some journaling, and I made the bed. Then Luke and I got out and picked up some celery juice and then went to his favorite latte place. Then we came home and I made myself a matcha latte and checked some emails, replied to some texts. Then I went for a walk to my Pilates studio, up some veggies to snack on, and then I heated up some soup for Luke. Then I got ready and... The reason the trad wife and the stay-at-home girlfriend are completely different is because of legal protection. The trad wife should probably not be confused with the stay-at-home girlfriend at all. Being a quote-unquote stay-at-home girlfriend, unless you have a plan, unless you are doing something outside of waiting to be married, being a stay-at-home girlfriend is a very risky position to stay in for any extended period of time. There are no guarantees, there are really no legal protection, no commitment. In my advice era, I would have said, please don't do this. If you are going to do this, make sure you have an entry and an exit plan outside of he loves me or he will marry me one day. Both can be coexisting at the same time and I would still say please be careful. Additionally, if you are in this position as a stay-at-home girlfriend, I would advise looking up the landlord-tenant laws in your state and make sure you have adhere to creating a landlord-tenant sort of relationship. <laughs> so you're not just getting kicked out. Because, girl, what are you doing? All right, a period. Back to the topic, because I'm not about to engage with a stay-at-home girlfriend. If you can do it and do it well and get what you want and he gets what he wants and there is a mutual understanding about what needs to be done and you have some level of protection and period, but just moving in with someone, quitting your job and taking care of him at home and him providing for you, please make sure you have a plan because de jure there is not a legal protection. Like, <laughs> I'm seeing this trend online, I'm so confused. <laughs> Period. Anything to secure that bag, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what to say. The stay-at-home girlfriend is not a part of the conversation. Without them, we can have a deadlock between traditional wife and whatever else is happening in the world, and there can be a discussion. If the stay-at-home girlfriend enters the chat, then this all goes to shreds. So for purposes of continuing to have a video to make, I'm just going to remove the stay-at-home girlfriends because, yeah, girl, no. <laughs> no. Have an exit plan. That's all I got to say on that. Let's get back to the topic. And by back to the topic, I mean, let's forget the chat why for two seconds and get into these husbands for a minute. <laughs> This paradigm requires that the woman be chosen by the man. So, sorry to the gays, this is only for heterosexual people. Step back. Not only do you have to be chosen by a man as a woman, you have to be chosen by a man that can provide for an entire household on their own income. This doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is very good with vetting because, like, wife and Poet and philosopher and number one trad wife has declared. Sorry. <laughs> Broke boys don't deserve no cookie. As much of a rebel as a trad wife believe themselves to be. And this is true. In the words of Hadley Freeman, this requires that their husbands be able to provide. As much as the trad wife think they are being renegade rebels by not working, their rebellion is based on their husbands earning enough to support a whole household. You did not opt out of capitalism 
and you most certainly aren't fighting any system. And FYI, I'm not telling you, like, you have to go out and fight the system. I'm pointing out that you are not actually fighting a system. And maybe you're saying, <laughs> joke's on you, Themis, because I never told you I want to fight a system. That, that, that was my country voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> I never told you I wanted to fight. <sighs> I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad. Though, if this actually makes you happy, then Feminist Fight has allowed you to choose to be at home or to be at work. So there still shouldn't be a problem with this. I think... For me, let's step out of the husband's ideology for a minute. It is the idea about white supremacy, which comes in the form of this tweet now posted for you to see where trad wives are calling for women to have as many, quote, white babies as they can. This takes a very sinister turn. The alt-right have been screaming for white women to submit and have more white babies as a replacement theory takes hold in America. The women have denied ties to the alt-right movement. I think that is important to note that when we're talking about the trad wife, they have overtly said that they have no ties to the alt-right except for that one woman with that one tweet with millions of likes saying... We should have as many white babies as we can. White women. Uh, period. Also to note is that New the New York Times wrote a article, and the title of the article uh, is The Housewives of White Supremacy. It goes into the ideas around the trad wife and how it is linked to white supremacy. I think it's an interesting read. I'm not taking this angle. I just have to point out the very obvious, I think, pushback that has been widespread regarding the trad wife and the ties to white supremacy. It is important that I note that even if I don't go into it. There is also the sort of religious, super specifically religious perspective regarding the trad wife. It's rebels. Uh, we follow the dark one, the devil, and he rebelled against God, and yeah. then he turned us to rebel against God. So we, rebellion is kind of like our second nature. It's so much easier to do that. So the idea of submitting, just the idea of submitting, it sounds scary. It sounds like, oh my goodness, you're going to make me to do something I don't want to do. I'm going to be less than. I'm making, I'm being made a doormat. Heck no, that's not going to happen. And so we have this very huge fear when it comes to uh, submission. But a few things that I want to remind each one of us is the Bible does say, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, Wives likewise be submissive to your own husbands. Now some of you may say, well Vlad, you know, this part of the scripture probably should be updated. But is it? Maybe it's our lives that should be changed, not the scripture. And I understand maybe you are the woman in here and you're like, man, but this is the part that is difficult. But in Ephesians chapter 5, this is what the scripture says, Wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord for the husband is the head of the wife and then the Bible gives us an example but if there is an issue that we strongly disagree on okay that means a wife must yield is a wife is a crown to her husband now the culture says a man is the head a wife is the neck and some wives take pride in that I'm the neck that indicates control because a neck really controls the head, decides where the head goes. And so some wives have adopted that role and they say, I'm the neck. I am going to control him. That's a Jezebel spirit. The Bible does not give a wife a role of a neck. The Bible gives a wife a role of a crown on the head. So wives, the scripture elevates you higher than the culture. This would be a good place to say amen, but it's okay. Um, the wife, the scripture elevates you to a crown, 
meaning it's a place of glory it's a place of honor it's a place of recognition do not step down to the view of culture I am the neck I'm gonna control him and everything no 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 that, that stuff does it's not good that's 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 a culture the scripture says you are a crown on your wife's head let's read that verse <laughs> look let's ignore his wife teaching in the church once the man is the head and the woman is the neck I mean the the crown all is well well unless she directly insult him about his ability to dress she wouldn't do that right a, a traditional wife would not just insult their husband in front of everyone can you imagine at first i did not realize that but then i realized he actually needs my help okay he has no sense of style he cannot put close together and that's just him some guys do okay pause before we continue do you know what a crown is and also do you know what a neck is let me know in the comment section would you rather be the crown or the neck because if you said the neck then you have the spirit of control <laughs> At least the neck can do something, girl. Why do you want to be a crown? Period. But that's something. The idea that the crown is important and the object which you put on your head and take off and you really don't do much with is better than being a neck. Because if you want to be a neck as a woman, you want control is kind of ridiculous but also kind of funny so period so a crown it is y'all are the crown stop saying y'all are the neck you are not the neck you are the crown period all right i've been joking a lot i think i don't know i don't know what's happening i've been drinking coffee so it should be fine <laughs> i haven't said anything bad but let's get to my critique because in my mind i've been defending the trad wives but I do have some critiques, and here they are. First of all, I am very pro-hypergamy. If a woman wants to be hypergamous, a woman should be able to be hypergamous. I have listened to Paris, Chrissy, Pink Pill, Chloe, all these amazing content creators on YouTube, and they make amazing content geared towards black women being hypergamous because of something that is very known within the black community specifically about women dating down it is what it is that is different from the ideas of i'm being a trad wife having the quote-unquote soft life by even let's do chrissy for example they've pointed out on many occasion that even if you are with someone who makes a ton of money and you are safe and secure, that you should always be able to provide for yourself in case that ends. That is, maybe his life ends, maybe he leaves, maybe something happens and now you are on your own. The idea is that you should be able to provide and protect yourself. If I am wrong, I'm sure the ladies would correct me and will correct me. I welcome that kind of correction. I am not pointing this out to say some of the Chad wives aren't thinking deeply about security and their own protection. In fact, I will play a video right now of one of said Chad wife explaining that they are not silly and that they have thought about what they would do in case their husband is no longer able to take care of them. Like anything in life, it comes down to having common sense, okay? Um, when you go into a marriage and that marriage might end, everything that you guys have created together, bought together, everything is now a marital asset, okay? So if my man up and leaves me tomorrow, first of all, I'm coming for him for alimony, child support. Um, if I need it and I absolutely couldn't get a job, which this isn't reality, have you seen this economy? Everyone is hiring you, go get, go get a job. Uh, either way, if I needed it, assistance is a thing. It's very real. Um, it's not like you're gonna end up in a box on the side of the road. Regardless, we have assets together. We have retirement funds. We have 401ks. We have um, so many savings accounts. We have stocks, right? We have a house together. We have cars together. 
all of those are split when you get divorced. You're going to go to court and they're going to determine who gets these things, right? And it's usually the mom because she's a sole caregiver. There are laws in place that literally prevent stay-at-home moms from being put out with nothing after a marriage. That's why these laws exist. Because people, men, used to treat women like shit and make, force them into being stay-at-home moms, right? And then kick them out because they could go cheat with neighbor Martha. And then they leave her with nothing and she has nothing to show for it. That's just not the reality in 2022. We have so many options, including but not limited to life insurance if he happens to mysteriously fall over dead the next day. Let's just touch on, I do have an education behind me. I do, did leave a career behind me. You subscribe I to the Chad wife philosophy around dating and being traditional. You are subjecting yourself to having a dictator. It is what it is. Fight with yourself, not with me. Go down to the comments and do that. The issue with this fundamentally is, well... You are at the mercy of the kind of dictator that you choose or if you chose a good one and they become bad, who people become long term with you. That is extraordinarily problematic for the person who has less power because if your dictator is not benevolent, then you could find yourself in some serious mess but also lesser mess if you will that could cause a toll on you mentally i mean kidology made a video and at the front there was this conversation happening between a wife and a husband where the husband seemed incapable of taking care of his own children Here be honest how often is it i actually get to just pop into town just with a friend it never happens what do you mean I'm telling right now? It happens a lot. No. Uh, and then I'm the one that has to just... I don't know what to do with them. No, they're no. Mom, what do you mean? Don't, what do you mean you don't know what to do with them? Mark, they are just... I, I, I try to talk to them and they don't know... I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. That's why I need to look after them. Mark! Are you busy? Do you think I get a day off? Do you think, as a mother, they go, oh, you know what, here's the magic one. Have a day off, why don't you? That does not happen. So you know what, you should be thankful to have your day off with them. Yeah, but, you know, I do with the kids, it's hardly like a day off work, is it? It's not exactly it's, honestly, you know what disgusts me the most, and it really boils my blood, is the fact that you are not on the phone right now saying, do you know what, babe, I would love a bit of extra time with them. And you know what, you've been working so hard, go and enjoy yourself, have a good few hours, and we'll be waiting for here when you get back. You don't even want to spend time with them. I just feel like you have got a clock on me all the time. I, you know what? I would just come out for a fun time this morning. I came to shop for the things that we need. And I need you to watch the kids. Honest. Your job. Honest to God, Mark, the level, the level that you put in with the children, honestly, I'm not just saying this, it breaks my heart. You don't put in enough time. You don't pay enough time to us either. Yes, I know you're out working, but there is, you've got to give more. Right, but you're saying I can give time to you and now you're going to wear while drinking, so how am I this is oh, you're going out drinking you're going out drinking i'm not going out drinking i'm literally seeing a friend for an hour tops but you know what there's no point because you've already ruined it so you're coming home then yes i am coming home so then you can go and do whatever you want to do with your day and i will look after the children yeah yeah that's actually it's maybe you do what you promised me right brilliant i am so glad you've got exactly what you wanted Right. Well, I'll see you soon now. At some point, that she wasn't too bad, hopefully. But even in the case that that might be the result, that seems extraordinarily stressful, especially over a long period of time. Not only that, that might actually be the lighter part of the spectrum. This might be the quote unquote good marriages. What happens when he is? worse than that after your children after the marriage 
What happens to you if you cannot leave because you're financially dependent on him? I'm not saying this is going to happen, but it is a possibility. That is a, That it is a possibility should cause some concern, at least from my perspective. But what do I know? Let's move on. So, this is not to say everyone who chooses life should stop. In fact, if that's what you want to do, do it. I say plan and make sure you have an exit strategy or anything like that because it is what it is. Don't be completely dependent on anyone is my just general stance. But do you? That is, Those are not the arguments I have critique for. Um, there are some arguments that are coming up that I find weird. In fact, I should close with the idea around capitalism when it's time to close, because I don't think this is an argument against feminism. The more I watch the trad wives, the more I realize this is about capitalism. We'll talk about that when we get there. I understand that people are tired, and the way in which we go about individually making sure that we have the capacity to enjoy the one life we have to live is something that you have to decide. And I would never try to trample on anyone's choice in that matter. However, it makes sense that we fully contextualize why it is that we are tired. It's not because of feminism that we are tired. And in fact, the men who go to work are also tired. We should also talk about dings, which is dual income. Uh, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. But the first argument I want to tackle is... Continue, um, Allie. Yeah, no, it just makes it harder to stay faithful, you know? And I think, like, one of the reasons why I think I'm married today and how I'm very confident to come out and talk about my marriage, because if I thought my marriage was going to, like, end overnight, I'd be really embarrassed talking about it online. But, like, my husband is the best sex I've ever had in my life. You know, and so it's like I get to have that whenever I want at a moment's notice. But if I had kind of been around the block more, then I might have already had the best sex of my life. And that's like a heavy thing for a woman to carry psychologically if you're in a relationship with a man and you're like, well, that guy hit it better. You know what I mean? So it's like, but the more men that you sleep with, the more likely that is to occur. Whereas, like, if you just kind of take the more monogamous route of kind of like what you're doing right now in college then you have more of an opportunity to be sexually impressed by a man. You know what I mean? So it's just like getting into more positive habits that support monogamy. Because like the college Hello. life ends. To that, the one thing I will say is, to the person who has never had caviar, everything tastes like beluga, and you might as well go ahead and get a metallic spoon and dip it in there and eat it from that. You won't know the difference. <laughs> Because she's not wrong. When you don't know, you don't know. And so, period. <laughs> period. The trad wife aesthetics seen here seems also very specific. The camera lens focuses at a very specific angle for a very specific reason, I believe. I won't go any further, but the trend seems particularly interesting about the male gaze and interested in the male gaze. It's kind of fascinating to consider how the meaning of the word fetish has changed in the last couple of years, especially here on social media. For instance, a lot of people now ask whether this kind of video, the whole trad wife trend, the vibe, is fetish content. And what that means is does this video sexualize something that is not typically sexualized? And the fact that fish videos sexualize something that would be atypical lends a level of ambiguity and therefore plausible deniability on the part of the creator. At least in those cases where they're subtle, sometimes there's such an overabundance of evidence that it's pretty clear, but just as often it's not. And so making that determination as to whether something is fetish content involves a process of accumulation. Is there a sufficient number of markers, of clues that seem to indicate that it's fetish content to lead us to that conclusion? So in this video, we have food preparation. We have a lot of liquids and semi-solids being poured. There is a lot of direct eye contact. There's that sugary, sweet ASMR voice. Her hands are very active and they are very prominent. 
but we have to acknowledge that there are points against the whole fetish argument too. As odd as these sped up jerky motions are, it's not really typical of fetish content. Fetish content tends to be slow, ponderous, very teasing. And to that end, like, she actually produces something at the end. Something edible that she in fact eats. Fetish content likes to string us along. It doesn't like to reach a conclusion. But again, fetish content is also ambiguous, which means it doesn't necessarily have to be intended. You can very easily accidentally make fetish content. I accidentally made fetish content in a video a couple years ago. So the fact that so many people are seeing the markers of fetish content in this video, are asking the questions, are even just plain out making the accusation, would seem to indicate that regardless, yes, this is fetish content. I mean, at least for some people, it doesn't have to be fetish content for you. You can watch this and just want to eat the pumpkin bread at the end. I want to eat the pumpkin bread at the end. Well-made fetish content has that plausible deniability. It functions kind of like a dog whistle. If you're primed to receive the message, you're going to hear it. And if you're not, hey, have some pumpkin bread. I won't go any further on this critique. It's unfair because I'm not opposed to it. Uh, it could just be a marketing strategy, but I'm not quite sure why it would be aimed at men if this was about women reclaiming their, quote, femininity. A separate argument the trad wife trend makes is this idea that they're not telling other women to be a trad wife. This is particularly interesting considering the consistent notion that being at home and submitting is the woman's natural place and it is the natural order. These ideas being promoted is in fact reaffirming ideas around gender roles and what should and should not happen. So to step away from accountability by saying I'm not telling every woman to do it while simultaneously saying this is women's place seems to suggest that you are actually selling this idea. So I will move on from that because I don't want to belabor any one point and I promise you there are too many for me to just stay one place and make arguments upon arguments about a really easily debunkable rule. Unless you're Christian, of course, or super religious in any way that is patriarchal, then yeah, in your mind, women should be beneath men. And I said beneath because that's what it preaches. Fight with your Bible, not with me. <laughs> I must actually reverse a little bit here and say, maybe the reason why everyone is exhausted is because of how work is shared. In the move, in the push to have women be equal to men in the labor market and get equal pay, a part of the conversation that is missing is the oftentimes tremendous amount of labor women have to do in the workplace and at home. It seems from many studies that I will link down in the description, women have taken on what feminist theorists and researchers call the second shift. So it is this idea that women are both going to work and also coming home and doing their traditional work at home. Pause. Of course you're tired. Of, of course you're tired. Even biblically, right? If the man is supposed to toil the earth so that you can have the children and raise the children, your childbearing will be tremendously painful as a result of the Garden of Eden if you're Christian. Even in that case, you are now helping, assisting the man in his role to provide, but you are not being assisted in your role to be your children, biblically, I'm not saying this is de facto what you have to do, to be your children and take care of the home, resulting in the second shift, you are obviously exhausted. I mean, I, I would be. So this idea that something needs to change is true. Maybe men should take on more of a role at home. So you are both contribute if you want um, that kind of relationship where both of you work when you come home, both of you clean up, 
both of you help in child rearing because it's supposed to be somewhat equal, right? I mean, the research actually indicate that a more egalitarian role at home is actually better and the relationships tend to last longer that way. Take it if you will, throw it away. If you don't, I don't really care that much on this point, but it is something to consider. Um, I will put all the theorists regarding the second shift down below. I'm going to remove the dink portion where dual income, no children, dual income, no kids. I'm going to remove a bunch of the parts of reacting to people on the right who are chastising feminists who oppose the trad wife but were themselves opposed to the idea of dink, which is dual income, no kids, because why would they be consistent about your choice? I'm going to remove all of that and just move to the conclusion now because this video is a lot longer and seems to it suggests that I care a lot more than I do. I think it's an interesting phenomena and that's why I'm doing a sort of review on it. I recognize that life seems a bit harsh for a lot of people. I say that not feeling myself like life is harsh and that I am always exhausted, which I am. I actually do like working. Now, I do actually like working. I know I said that, but I actually do. But people are exhausted. People feel like the companies they work for don't care about them. Fun fact, they don't. Regardless of how many team building workshops you go to in the company regardless of how many Simon Sinek seminars they put in front of your face telling you that they love you and care about you bursting the bubble they don't they don't care it's a part of capitalism and their bottom line is all that matters so with that in mind I can recognize the very specific and obvious critique of capitalism and the exhaustion and uncertainty that comes with this kind of economy. Fun fact, men are also exhausted. Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Benjamin Franklin. When you've decided that you're going to be with someone and you're going to stay at home, please note that that's fine. No one should tell you that you shouldn't do that. However, point out your feeling of uncertainty. Point out your decision. Don't make it so that the understanding young girls get is that it is safer to be under a man who will provide and protect you without showing them how to find said man and make sure said man is a provider one that's easy check the bank account check the job check the job security but the protecting bit is a bit harder to vet for and unless you can come up with how not only should you be telling women to rest in their femininity and go be with a man, it is my opinion that they should also have some kind of exit strategy. This, by the way, is why I like watching Chrissy, Pink Pill, Paris, and even Chloe. The idea that you should be hypergamous might be off-putting to some. Some might say it's anti-feminist. People might hate it. The thing I like about these women in particular is the fact that they consistently drive the point at home that you should figure out a way to be secure in the case that you lose it all. That is, your husband can't pay for everything. That you should be able to take care of yourself. And that's a good thing. The fact that that is possible means you should use that because the graveyard, unfortunately, is filled with women who did not know what to do when their husband passed away in the 1940s, 50s, before this time, and even after. It is not wise to sit back 
and only depend on your husband, not knowing what you will do if something should happen to him. That is my caution. That being said, that is a critique of capitalism, but we will continue. If we narrow this down, which I did not want to do regarding the black community, it does not make sense to even suggest that a number of women in any critical amount is going to only date men who will provide for them while they stay at home, unless you're planning to somehow open your options up to other kinds of men, because just on raw numbers, there's more women than men in the black American community. That, that's just numerically, it's impossible. Then we're talking about eligible bachelors available. It gets even harder. Then we talk about people who can provide on a single income for a family. That gets really, really difficult to find. But not only that, within our community, the research indicates here that the higher the man's income, the less likely he is to marry, at least marry early. And now you are left competing with a bunch of women for a single black man. I have to make this specifically to black because of the community that is on my channel that I am talking to. It is difficult for you to have the hypergamy flag or the trad flag, trad wife flag raised if you're only limiting yourself to dating within the community. Most of them will call you gold diggers anyways. So it, it is an odd thing to advocate. I am not opposed to it. I'm just saying be cautious. Have an escape plan. <laughs> that is the best way I know how to put it. Have an escape plan. If you get a dictator, pray to God, it is a benevolent one because femicide, black femicide. That's all I have for today. I ended it on that note that is jarring because so often we get into these conversation and the butterfly feelings we get removes our ability to think logically. Again, pro-hypergamy. Again, pro-trad wife. If you can figure out a way to make sure that you have a plan to take care of yourself in the case that you, you have to. Very much against stay-at-home girlfriends. Like, absolutely not. But if you do, make sure, again, you have an exit plan. You don't have to take any of this advice. Please don't write in the comment, why are you commenting on it? Don't talk about this. Because the truth is, you don't have to listen. And you can listen and ignore everything that I say. Please, however, don't. And when you do decide to engage... Please engage in a way that protects you and your children. Also your husband, but if they're the providers, they should be fine financially. You, on the other hand, won't be if you don't plan for this. Now, I am pro-dink, which is dual income, no children. <laughs> Do that for as long as you want. Travel the world. Have fun with your spouse and then come back and if you decide to have children you decide to have children don't be pressured into having children right now and if you don't have a husband to be a dual income no children no kids if you have a boyfriend it still works it's just dual income if you guys live together doing your thing do your thing if you're by yourself enjoy it while you can and don't be pressured into quitting your job and wait for some man to take care of you because, look, you might not be the one they choose, and that's fine because the society has made it very, very, very clear that you're valuable without being married. You're valuable without kids. Like, you can do what you want to do. All of this nonsense on social media usually is done for the maximum sort of impact. So let's kind of ignore it and live our best lives <laughs> the best way we know how to. And that's how I'm going to end this video. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye.